Hello, vinyl community. Whoo, it's gonna be another scorcher. Uh, we're fairly consistently having triple digit weather here. Ah, <sighs> yeah. I'm looking forward to retiring to a cooler climate. <laughs> but I have a good, what, 20 years? Um, 15? <laughs> anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I have some vinyl finds for you, so cheers. Some nice cold coffee. All right, it's instant coffee, but I was being lazy. <laughs> All right, so I went back to the 50% um, off sale at, uh, at Barnes & Noble. I, I noticed the the stock of 50% items is uh, dwindling <laughs> but I still found I I could have bought a lot more actually but I found three killer ones that I'm kind of ashamed I I missed the first time but I was kind of sticking to a certain limit and yeah um I think these were slightly more than the other ones, but not not a whole lot. Uh, the last one I'm going to show was probably the most expensive out of the whole bunch, and it wasn't even all that much. So, anyway, very excited about these. All right, so this is the first of my collection, and I was thinking, uh, why have they not been in my collection yet? <laughs> all right, so this is the jam sound effects from 1980 this is their fifth album um basically uh, the jam were around from uh, 1975 to 1982 um similar similar bands include the clash i can hear a lot of the clash on this album um elvis costello and the, they're more melodic songs, um, more mid-tempo melodic songs. I, I would say even uh, suggest the English beat. Um, so basically they're, they're British punk, uh, uh, mod revival, and new wave. And the, the tone of the, the album overall is, is, is brash and, and boisterous and, and passionate. Um, I, on my first listen, I was pretty much blown away. And every time I've listened, listened to it like four times since I got it. And every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So this is skyrocketing up, uh, my list of, uh, albums that I most enjoy. I have no idea where it falls in that list yet, but yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, what a great start to an album. The song Pretty Green. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that bass line, uh, just perfect. It, it immediately hooks you into the album. And you're like, oh yeah, this could be good. <laughs> Um, then we have, uh, the second track, which is Monday. Very, very catchy song. Um, I, I think that's one of the songs that leans a little bit towards the English beat, maybe. Um, oh, and then, uh, oh my goodness. My, my favorite song on the album is Set the House Ablaze. That, wow. Wow. <laughs> That is so good. Um, uh, then the last track on the first side is That's Entertainment. Another great song. That one's uh, more mellow. Um, then on the next side, the second track, we have Man in the Corner Shop. That's an, another um, uh, catchy and melodic song. Again, maybe invoking uh, uh, the English beat a little bit. Oh, uh, and then we have, uh, oh, um, music for the last couple that has a killer 
bass line that keeps your head bobbing. <laughs> it's so killer. Oh, man. Uh, and then uh, probably my second, uh, yeah, probably my second favorite track on the album is is the last one, Scrape Away. It, it just has this pulsing bass line, just, oh, man. So if you enjoy bass, this is a fantastic album because the bass is front and center. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, ooh, yeah, my goodness. <laughs> very, very good. Thrilled I picked that up. Wow. A 60s band, because the 60s is my favorite decade of music. And yet, this is, uh, this is an artist I, I don't believe I've had in my collection. I'm pretty sure, in fact. Um, so I was, I was happy to pick this up. The Bo Brummels. This is Triangle. Um, so this one, uh, it's definitely a concept album, and you can tell because it, it essentially describes the album rather than a track listing, you know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so a concept album from 1967 is their fourth album. Uh, they were around from uh, 1964 to 1968, so a fairly short-lived band. Um, and then they did reappear in 1975 and 2013. Uh, I, I would compare them to uh, The Turtles, uh, Michael Nesmith, uh, The Grassroots, and The Hollies. Um, the overall tone of the album is, is kind of bittersweet and plaintive. Um, yeah. Uh, so an interesting thing about them is they are one of the first country rock bands so they're country rock folk rock am pop and psych garage and there's some good psych on here definitely oh my goodness <laughs> well the the opening track is is really good uh, are you happy uh magic hollow that's an, another really good one. they're all good don't get me wrong uh, magic hollow uh triangle is my uh, my second favorite song on the album. Very, very good. But I was blown away <laughs> by The Wolf of Velvet Fortune. Wow. That song is crazy. So this is really, really good. I definitely recommend it. Just be aware that uh, Sal Valentino, the lead singer... His voice is slightly on the higher side. There's nothing wrong with that. But he perhaps, perhaps overdoes the vibrato a little bit, um, which to me kind of shows a lack of confidence in one's vocals. Um, I mean, unless that's just the style he's going for, but to me it's a little bit overdone. Um, yeah, but... A killer, killer album, definitely, definitely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't read it as high as as uh, sound effects by the, the Jam, uh, but this is up there, definitely. I'm thrilled I picked it up because I love my sixties. All right, now for something completely different. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, th this was one year after I graduated high school, and. Uh, a band appeared on the scene with a huge, 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 huge hit uh, that was just all over the airwaves. Um, yeah. That is Arrested Development. Three years, five months, and two days. Is that, to, uh, yeah, and two days in the life of um, so this is, uh, let's see, uh, from 1992, so I graduated in 91, <laughs> 
not to give anything away, but... <laughs> and this is their first of six albums, uh, although one of those albums, I believe, was an Unplugged, so I don't know if that should even be counted, but, um, yeah. Uh, so it, they were around from 1988 to 1996, and they made reappearances in uh, 2006 and 2010. Um, I would, I would, uh, compare them to, uh, PM Dawn, definitely Diggable Planets, uh, KR KRS-1 and Us-3. Um, they're, you know, I, I forgot to write their, their, um, their genre, I'm reading my notes here. I forgot to write their genre down, but it's, it's pretty easy. They're, they're basically political rap, um. Yeah, and alternative rap. Um, yeah, so uh, PM Dawn, Diggable Planets, KRS One, Us Three. Uh, the tone on the album is is very uh, reflective, yet lively and and earnest. Um, you have there were a few um, uh, singles on here. Um, I think most of which did fairly well. Of course, the huge one I was referring to was Tennessee. That, oh my gosh. And I can just, get, I'm just going to give you the spoiler. It's the best song on the album. <laughs> um, and sometimes, you know, that can be a little disappointing when when the single is the best song on the album. Um, I guess that's not uncommon, though. But personally, I, I like to hear a single, get hooked into the band, and then hear the album and think, oh man, that was nothing. That that was like just a peek at, at their talent. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but that, that song is so good and it deserved the airplay, definitely. Um, but some other good ones, the second track, uh, Mom Was Always, Always On Stage, uh, People Every Day, which uh, kind of plays off the song Everyday People. Um, Mr. Wendell, that's my second favorite song on the album. Um, Fishing for Religion, that's a really good one. Um, Give a Man a Fish, that's a that's a nice uh, uh, funky track. And another funky track would be uh, uh, Dawn of the Dreads. And then of course we have Tennessee. So I was I was thrilled, and this is a double LP. Uh, it comes with the lyric sheet. And it's just in one extra thick sleeve. So no gatefold, unfortunately. Unfortunately, oops. I didn't put the record back in its sleeve. <laughs> I guess I missed. <laughs> but while I have it out, <laughs> there's the label. Kind of a nice minimalist label. Yeah, so thrilled to pick these up. This one, the original price was uh, 25 And uh, so, you know, 50% off, twelve fifty, right? Um, so, oh my goodness. <laughs> Fantastic album. Now, out of these three, and it's totally not fair to compare these three. Well, it might be fair to compare their first two, but throwing this in there, it it doesn't compete. <laughs> it's a fantastic album. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I'm so thrilled I picked it up. But, yeah. <laughs> I do highly recommend it, though, so be sure and check that out. Uh, very pleased with uh, the Boat Brum Brummel's Triangle. And absolutely blown away by sound effects. The jam. Wow. <laughs> anyway, hey, I made some pretty good time there, right? Ah, I hope everybody's well. Uh, hopefully the weather where you are is better than it is here. Um... Let, let's let's check in with with uh, that woman over there, Alexa. What's the forecast? In Riverside, there's an excessive heat warning in effect until Friday, August twenty first, ten p.m. 
The current weather is 92 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today, you can look for partly sunny weather with a high of 103 degrees and a low of 71 degrees. Okay, okay. Just so you know, if you want to quickly share the weather forecast with others in your household, just ask me to make an announcement. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to do that, but uh, because my wife st stays up super, super late. So, <laughs> so she gets up late as well. Um, yeah, but I won't do that to her, share the weather with her. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Hopefully you did. But anyway, um, 103. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, again, I hope you're well. And I will see you next time.